Okay, hi everyone, Sam Smith EQ, and welcome back to our series on opening principles and opening traps. And today, well, instead of bishop c4, which is what we were looking at before, we're going to look at this, the Scotch Gambit, which is probably the best scoring system for white in online blitz. It works extraordinarily well. And we're going to look at two reasons why. In this position, black has two natural moves, which develop and follow the opening principles. Bishop c5 and knight f6. And white has two different traps, which punish very natural moves from black and well, score very well in practice. So let's take a look. Let's start with bishop c5. I think this is the simplest one to understand. The trap is going to start with c3. And then after takes... Uh, it's almost game over. I'm exaggerating just a little bit, but already black is in huge trouble, which is funny because, again, this is the most played move. Let's look at the stats. And as you can see, black does terrible. All right. And I think to understand why, it's not too hard, really. Black has just spent two moves not developing, not doing anything, just grabbing material. That's already iffy. And the problem is that he's opening up the position when there's tactical weaknesses. Again, whenever there's that bishop staring at f7, tactical weakness. We've got a bishop on c5, undefended, tactical weakness. And we can immediately combine those two things. Bishop takes f7, and after king takes, queen goes to d5, we got a fork, king goes to move back, and white just scores overwhelmingly. You can either take it right away, even cuter <laughs> is to throw in this check, force the, g, um, the g6, and then we take. And if I were to show you the stats, you're just going to see overwhelmingly uh, the score is in uh, white's favor. Just absolutely overwhelming. Uh, black's up a pawn. He's either going to lose that pawn back or he can take it. Sure, whatever. And uh, you can see the stats don't change. This is why it's cute to force that g6 move because now that bishop has a huge diagonal. And black can't castle. Center is open. White's got the easiest job in the world. Castle, knight c3, he's already finished development, and he's just going to crush black. And the stats don't lie. Why'd this happen? All of this stems all the way back, just from here. Let me get rid of that, so we don't give away the, uh, the correct move. Just two moves in the open, two tempi, where we're not developing. When we have A, these tactical weaknesses, and B, a wide open position, it can spell your downfall. And this is why this is such an effective uh, trap, especially in online blitz. You're barely thinking for the first five moves. Boom, game over. So let's start thinking. What should we do instead? Well, we just reflect on the opening principles. We know what we want to do. We want to develop. We want to castle. And we want to control the center. And there's a move that does essentially all three of those. Knight f6. It develops a piece. It lets us castle the next move. And the knight is pressuring the center, allowing us to either you know, take the pawn or play d5. And what's nice about this is that we've actually now transposed out of Scotch Gambit territory and into the regular mainline Italian. Um, to see what I mean, just sort of memorize this position, stare at it, see where all the pieces are. If I were to back all the way up, e4, e5, knight f3, instead of the Scotch Gambit, if we were to look at the regular Italian, c3, knight f6, these moves have been played hundreds of thousands of times, Look, it's the exact same position as before, as in after. And so instead of having to worry about all the Scotch Gambit traps, we've now just got a regular Italian. Now, of course, there's still you know, threats and ideas in here, right? After, for example, takes this position, uh, white is threatening to play deep. I think there's a the Mahler attack, something like this. We're going to castle, and then there's like David. Like, there's still some threats and ideas here, and black... Uh, needs to be accurate, but it's uh, a lot better than losing in five moves like we just saw. And whenever you can just transpose into regular opening, that's always good. Backing up. Let's go back to the Scotch Gambit. So we've just looked at the bishop c5, and there's that, the idea is to play c3, really tempt black, and again, it's the most common move to open the position up and black is, I don't know if black is lost, lost, but black is doing much, much worse. The second move is knight f6. Just developing. And what's interesting is that this is going to, well, after knight g5, 
This looks very similar to the last videos that we watched in this series. White's ganging up right there on f7. What do you do? Well, let's block it with d5, most played move. E takes d5. I should probably delete these arrows. We got the most tempting move is knight takes d5. And hopefully, again, if you watch the previous um, episode in this series, this position should jump right out. We already looked at this position. After castle, let me show you the stats. We've looked at this. Black is in huge trouble. Absolutely huge. He's losing about 70% of the time. And we can see why. Wide open. Uh, white is already castled. Got the open e-file. We've got this pressure here on f7. Black is just... If black could play two moves, bishop b7 and castle, maybe he'd be okay. He would be okay. He'd be great. But he can't. After bishop e7, we throw that in. And just look at that. Unbelievably huge. White is just absolutely crushing. After takes, queen goes to f3, attacking the knight, attacking the king. Oh, knight's pinned, so it can't move. If you try and block with the bishop, well, you've just lost that knight, and your king is going to be attacked the rest of the game. That's not very good. And if you try and move in, sure, you're defending the knight, but open e-file, and, you know, you got checkmate here. Or you can try and hang on uh, with some knight goes to... Um, e5 but again we got some bishop f4 there's even some funny lines where you play not that where you play knight c3 just to bring your other rook in faster and black should not survive this in fact I, black is completely lost so that's kind of the threat it's this whole sorry let me back up by playing knight to g5 is we're essentially tempting white sorry tempting black to transpose into a really bad version of the fried liver now, d5 isn't wrong. E takes d5. Because, we, sorry, we need to play d5, right? Um, f7 is being attacked. We got to do something about it. So we play d5 to blunt the bishop. The problem isn't with d5. The problem is, um, like, the d5 pawn is actually blocking the bishop from hitting f7. So that's great. This pawn is making this bishop worse. It's once we eliminate that pawn, well, now this knight needs to be defended, and if it moves, f7 is going to fall. You know, we got that queen f3, which comes in and hits both, and it's, again, the tactical weaknesses which are hurting black in this position. It's opening up too quickly, and he has too many weaknesses with too little development to try and all hold. Just specifically, it doesn't work. And so what we need to do is leave that pawn there. Black has two options. We, okay, you've got a bunch of options, right? You can throw in a check. We can move this knight somewhere and then things are great. Um, as long as that pawn stays there, there's no disaster on f7. I think knight a5 is the simplest. Attacks the bishop. We can come in here. Let's just play some bishop d7. And I think what proves that this is okay is if we show the stats, even, right down the board. And we've just reached a normal position. We can just play chess. Everything's fine. We've dodged the major problems. Now, there's something else just worth pointing out. Is I mentioned how you got to play d5, right? We've looked at a very similar position in the regular Italian game, the two knights. But we spent a lot of time looking at this position. How is this position different from the one we were just looking at? So we've got here, 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 here. Well, as we can see, the difference is that this pawn has moved. Well, does that change how we want to react as black? Does it give us any extra options? And it does. It actually gives us this funny move. Knight goes to e5, which hits the bishop. It defends um, f7 as well. And we're ready to play h6, kick the knight back, and everything's uh, absolutely hunky-dory. The computer absolutely loves this move. Uh, I think, personally, d5 and then not taking the pawn, anything else is just simpler, and I think it's easier to understand. But hey, it's hard to argue with the computer nowadays, right? Um, so there we go. And the reason, or how you can find a move like knight e5 is, again, well, the way that I would do it is comparing it with the two knights versions that we just saw. How is this position different from this other position I know? And then once you know that and you can see that, you can try and say, all right, 
does that give me extra options? And here, knight e5 is a really, really good move. So just worth keeping in your back pocket. Okay, so I've got uh, one more video in this series coming up. We're going to take a look at the Evans Gambit that was suggested by a viewer. Um, if there's any, well, I have one more ser video planned in this series. If there's any other ideas that, um, any other gambits, any other traps you'd like to take a look at, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Um, otherwise, it's been a lot of fun. Um, thank you for the feedback. Comments been great. Do the whole YouTube video thing, like and subscribe. It helps the channel out. That's fantastic. Otherwise, um, that's it for now. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.